Hi, it's Monday afternoon. Um, we are about three or four days into this um, sort of self-quarantining that we're doing. I'm sure you're doing the same. I'm at home uh, and probably like you, I've got a whole load of different responsibilities now that I probably wasn't thinking I was going to have it on a Monday morning. I've got my kids home from school and from college. Uh, I bet you do too. Um, but like you, uh, I'm a team leader, so I've got a team as well. Uh, so I thought what I might do is share a few things that you can do as a team leader to ensure that during this really difficult and odd time that your people can stay productive and stay engaged. It's always hard being a team leader, but it's all the more difficult during times like this when everyone is looking to you. So, you know, be yourself, obviously. Um, you're going to be most effective as a team leader when you're authentic. But, but nonetheless, here are five things that you might want to think about. First, and really encouragingly, the ADP Research Institute's just done this global study of engagement, and it turns out the most engaging work status uh, isn't coming to the office five days a week. It's actually just coming to the office only one day a week, which suggests that team, the feeling of team, the feeling of being engaged at work, isn't a place that you go to. It's a feeling that you have in your head and your heart. Um, so what this research tells you is it is entirely possible during this time to keep people feeling connected and keep people feeling super engaged in their work. It is possible. In fact, it's probably more possible than having them come to the office every day. Second, yes, a lot of people will be telling you, maybe your company is telling you, to hold virtual team meetings, team connect at the beginning of the week, team huddles um, with Zoom or WebEx Teams or whatever. And that's, there's no question that's good. Um, it brings structure, it brings predictability, but I would strongly suggest that in that meeting, your goal is not to kind of go around the room and see how people are feeling and play therapist or, or try and do a, a kind of a virtual happy hour and pretend that you're all the, um, that, that's really not the outcome you're trying to get for your people. The outcome at these team, once a week team meetings is confidence. You're trying to up the level of confidence of your team that's the job of a leader. Take anxiety and turn it into confidence. How do you do that? Well, obviously, don't fake your confidence. You don't, you don't know what's around the next corner any more than the next person does. But one of the ways to give confidence is to help people know what they can control in their lives. Help them in every team meeting know which parts of their work or home life they can control. If it's their home life, they can control their washing of their hands. They can control their self-quarantining. At work, you can control whether or not you get something done this week and what that is. Help people know in these meetings what they can control and their confidence will go up. The third thing to remember is that during this time, people do get lonely. We do get disconnected. And, and yes, the team thing is good, but the most important way to, to restore connection is one-on-one. -on -one. It doesn't have to be long. It can be 10, 15, 20 minutes, but it's every week one-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one. You'll hear a lot about the team stuff, which is fine. Keep going with the one-on-one -on -one, because each person wants to feel like they're hearing or they're being heard by you. Uh, ask people what they're focused on this week. Ask people what their priorities are this week. Ask people what you can do to help. Keep that feeling of constant hearing and constant suggestion every week. It will keep you connected with them. And the good thing about that check-in, because we've been studying this now for, for years, is that the medium doesn't matter. The frequency matters. It doesn't matter if you do it in person versus doing it by phone, versus doing it by email, versus doing it by text. It, it, it seems as though how you do it matters far less than that you do it. So during this time of quarantine, um, keep up those one-on-one -on -one touch points with each of your people. They need them from you. Fourth, you need them too. There are, there'll be some people during the course of your regular working life that you touch base with every week that lift you up. Somebody who's got a spirit or an energy about them that you kind of use to lift you up. So the fourth thing I would suggest is during this time, identify who those people are and then reach out to them every week because you need a little bit of a jolt too. There'll be somebody or some people in your uh, constellation that you use to kind of lift you up figure out who they are and deliberately reach out to them. And then the last thing is, when you study the practices of great leaders, you do realize that they deliberately make sense of experience to clarify their values. Well, now is a wonderful time for you to use this experience to clarify your values. 
perhaps in the past you've, you've been a little vague about what you deeply value about work or about family and you've generalized. Well, now is the time to dive into deeply. What do you stand for? And of course, if, if you can really drill into that, then it almost goes full circle because then out of that comes more predictability. Your team will see from you more predictability, more um, certainty about what's important versus what's not. And out of that, of course, comes more confidence for them. So that's what I have for you this Monday afternoon. In the meanwhile, stay focused on what you can do for your team. Be there for your family. Be sanitary and safe. And if you're going to really smooch and hug something, um, hug your dog. I've got one here that I thought I would... Oh, oh it's so... Oh, oh, it's... Oh, oh. Okay. Love you. See you next time.